Welcome back to another exciting episode of Back to the Future. Let's continue. Hey Emmett, got a sec? Why yes, in fact, I've got several. So, you and Edna, how serious are you guys? Well, we both enjoy a good joke every now and then, but I'd say on the whole we're fairly serious people. Why do you ask? No, no. What I mean is, how serious is your relationship? Oh, well, as a scientist, I can't state this with 100% confidence, but I'm provisionally certain that I'm head over heels in love. Really? With Edna? What can I say? She's my muse. In the weeks since we've been courting, she's given me so many wonderful ideas. Are you sure Edna's the right woman for you? What do you mean? Don't you think she's a little... Uh, controlling? Controlling? Edna? No, 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 no. She's just giving me a little much-needed guidance. Before I met her, I was such a flibberty gibbet. Always getting distracted by the slightest stray idea. But now, thanks to Edna, I stay focused on the task in front of me, like a narrow band stream of stimulated photon emissions. Hmm. Focused! Isn't she a little... Uh, cold? Don't let the school marm exterior fool you, buddy. Edna's got enough warmth to raise a liter of water from zero to a hundred degrees centigrade. Know what I mean? I kind of wish I didn't. I don't know. I, I just think Edna might be a little... dangerous. Oh, I agree. You do? Like all independent women, she's a danger to the patriarchal status quo. That's one of the things I love about her. She shakes things up. You have no idea. I just think you should be careful, that's all. Thanks for the concern, but I'll be fine. I still don't think Edna's right for you. Oh? And who is she right for? You? Me? No way. Relax. I'm just yanking your tibia. Is all this new stuff what you're showing off at the expo? Yes. It's our mental alignment meter. Mental alignment meter? I thought you were working on some sort of rocket car. Oh, the rocket propulsion system was far too unreliable, as that incident with Einstein proved. By the way, whatever happened to Einstein? I wish I knew. Anyway, I started tinkering with an alternate method of propulsion, but that was before things started heating up with Edna. Our conversations about the possibilities of applying technology to social ills push my research in a whole new direction! What's a mental alignment meter? It's the most revolutionary piece of technology since the cotton gin! What does it do? It reads and interprets the subconscious desires of the human mind. Why would you want to probe people's minds? Why wouldn't you? Imagine being able to diagnose mental disorders with a flick of a switch, or detect the truthfulness of courtroom testimony merely by connecting a witness to a small portable device. Your machine does all that? Not yet. Frankly, right now the whole thing's just a gussied up potentiometer. But with years of refinements and a whole lot of investors, the MAM will be able to identify countless psychosis and neurosis. Alcoholism, acrophobia, Oedipal complexes. And? And then we can set about curing them, of course. Of course. Ah, invasion of privacy. How does the mental alignment thing work? Here, I'll show you. Hey. The test subject wears this mind mapping helmet, which probes the brain by measuring fluctuations in skin conductance and electrical resistance on the surface of the parietal lobe. Uh-huh. When I turn on the mind mapping helmet with this radio switch, the subject is exposed to a series of visual stimuli intended to provoke a series of positive or negative responses as indicated by these lights on the helmet. Hey, is that? As the responses are recorded, they're relayed to this special typewriter which prints out a punch card that represents the subject's mind map. All I see is a bunch of holes. Well, to you, maybe. But to our mental alignment meter, this mind map is nothing less than a peek into your subconscious. Observe as I place your mind map into the MAM. 
Layabout? Is that machine calling me a slacker? No, your own physiological responses did. Anyway. Did you make a mind map of yourself? Of course. Take a look. Edna's is right. You are a model citizen. At least as far as my invention's concerned. Confidentially, this whole enterprise is a little light on the hard science and a little heavy on the smoke and mirrors. Could you tell me how this mental alignment meter works again? Of course. Now, subjects put on the mind mapping helmet which I activate with this radio switch. Check. The subject is then exposed to a series of visual stimuli provoking positive, negative, or indifferent reactions that are recorded by the mind map printer. Right. Once a mind map is completed, it can be inserted into the mental alignment meter to pronounce judgment on the subject's mental state. Okay, I think I got it. I can't believe you invented all this in two months. Well, like I said, there's not really a whole lot of inventing going on here. I just dressed up a $5 potentiometer with a lot of bells and whistles. But... Don't get me wrong, it does a remarkable job of telling whether a subject is currently liking or disliking what they're experiencing. But all the extra stuff about sorting out criminals from model citizens is mostly a bunch of hooey at this point. And what's with the new threads? Do you like them? You look like Colonel Sanders. Who? Never mind. Edna gave them to me. She says my usual clothes don't have enough zing for a public exhibition. What do you say we take a break for a couple of hours and go see a movie? A couple of hours? Actually, it may be more like 70 minutes. I haven't got a couple of hours. I still got all these mind maps to sort, and the MAM's wiring is still giving me fits, and... I get it, you're busy. How are things between you and your father? I'm kind of surprised he hasn't torn down your lab yet. Well, he's still angry with me and threatening to cut me out of his will, but I'm hoping that the civic potential of my mental alignment meter will win him over. Sure thing. The mind of a degenerate criminal. This kid Tannen's mind map, as captured by our mind map helmet. You could tell he's a criminal just by looking at this? No, but when it's fed into the mental alignment meter... <laughs> Weird. Weird nothing. It's science! What's this? It's the placard we'll be putting in front of our booth at the expo. The scientist that caught Kid Tannen? A small exaggeration, but Edna says it'll attract investors. What do you think of the picture? You look a little... constipated. What? Edna said I looked intense. Yeah, intensely focused on taking it. I get the picture. <laughs> hmm. I'll have to find a better one. Unfortunately, there's a lot to choose from. Heavy. Extremely. Mother has been rather obsessive about photographically cataloging my life. Hey, Emmett, I've got an idea. What? Why don't I take your photo album over to Edna so she can pick out your new picture? That's a great idea. She's got a better eye for these things than I do anyway. Thanks, pal. Don't mention it. What's this? That's a can of used motor oil, rocket fuel waste, and assorted chemical sludge left over from my abandoned rocket car. Gross. Accounting doesn't enter into it, but it is disgusting. Would you mind disposing of it on your way out? Uh, sure.
Hey, Emmett, I've got a... Whoa! <laughs> Whoops. What the heck? Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. Your, your suit's ruined. Edna's gonna be royally PO'd. Wrong. What? When Edna gave me this suit, I realized that the probability of me keeping it clean was infinitesimally remote. So, I spent a few hours whipping up this. Whoa! What was that? A chemical compound capable of wiping the grime off any surface. Damn it, you'll make a fortune. Not anytime soon, I'm afraid. Due to an inerrant instability in its molecular makeup, after 12 hours, the cleanser's component chemicals break down into a series of claw shredding enzymes, rendering it unsuitable for commercial use. Wait a minute, does that mean your suit's gonna dissolve in 12 hours? Hey, gods, no. The solution dissipates into the air after it's applied. But it does mean that after this batch of cleanser ages another 11 hours and 53 minutes, it would eat away this suit faster than a thousand starving moss. And that would be a crisis of unimaginable proportions. Why? Because this suit belongs to Edna's grandfather, who wore it on his wedding day. Poor guy was gunned down just a few years later. Emmett? Well, enough wool gathering. Back to work. That cleanser doesn't seem very portable. It isn't, but this is. A perfume bottle? Yes. Th no. I mean, yes, it's a perfume bottle, but inside is a concentrated dose of my all-purpose cleanser. With a little luck, this should last me through the next 12 hours before its component chemicals break down into a series of cloth-destroying enzymes. Clever. What the hell is that? What? Sorry, I, I thought I saw a tarantula. What's this typewriter do again? During a mental alignment test, it takes messages from the mind map helmet and turns them into punch cards. Like the one for Mr. Tannen over there. Seems complicated. Actually, it was all rather easy to put together. Once Edna gave me the idea. Sounds to me like you should be working on harder problems then. What? Uh, sorry, I've got to get back to work. Nothing happened. Well, that button advances the slides during the mind mapping test. It only works while the test is running. know that. That's John Wilkes Booth, the guy that shot Lincoln. So, I guess he's supposed to be a negative figure. Careful. Don't let all the flavor escape. It's Danny Parker. He's a cop, so I guess he's supposed to get a positive response from model citizens.
I don't know who that is, but he's clearly a tannin, so I guess he's a negative figure. Mmm, that smells good. I remember that picture from Edna's apartment in 1986. It's a kid and a relative of Edna, so it's probably a positive figure. Ew. Trixie, I don't think Edna approves of her, so I guess she's a negative figure. Ah, that smells much better. Mmm, that smells good. Emmett, I think your mind map test is broken. Oh, well, that switch just keeps shoring out on me. No time to fix it now. I'll have to take care of it at the expo. Looks like I'm not going to be doing any more mind maps. I guess I'll test this out and hope for the best. Bingo! Now Emmett's mind map is as bad as Tannin's. Now all I have to do is swap this out with Emmett's original mind map and Emmett's own machine will do him in. Holes on Emmett's new mind map line up perfectly with kids. I hope that means what I think it does. I should put it in the mental alignment meter to find out. Okay, Emmett. Get ready to meet the new you. Hey! What? I almost left behind my mind map card. We're gonna show it off at the expo as a rare example of a model citizen. Edna kill me if I forgot that. She might kill you anyway when she gets a look at that mind map. Once Emmett gets to the expo, I'll try to figure out how to get him to put his card in the mental alignment meter. But for now, I better concentrate on making Emmett a slob who cheats on his girlfriend. <laughs> what? I was just thinking about the future. All that talk about Edna's grandfather made me realize something. Please let it be something about lightning. Life can be short. Sometimes brutally so. So why not seize the day and grab your happiness while you can? I'm not sure I like where this is going. I was saving this for next Valentine's Day, but why should I? I know what I want. Emmett, no. I'm gonna ask Edna to marry me. Right now. No. Oh, right, right. I'll wait until tonight at the expo. It'll be much more romantic that way. Just think. By this time tomorrow, Edna and I will be engaged and will be the toast of the scientific community. And I owe it all to you. You're welcome. Don't, boy. 
Hey, Emmett, I've got to go out for a while. I thought Edna sent you to make sure I wasn't getting distracted. Oh, you'll be fine. It'll be safe in there. Hey, Doc. I mean, uh, Mr. Sagan. Excuse me a moment, Miss Strickland. I've got her neutralized for the moment. How's the plan proceeding on your end? It's about Edna. Don't worry. She's not going anywhere right now. That's good, but... What are you two talking about, anyway? It's a private matter. I promised I'd keep it between us. For the present. She isn't starting to get under your skin, is she? Heavens no. The memory of her older self wheeling me into the reconditioning chamber is just too strong. The younger version is decidedly more attractive, though. On another subject... Less distasteful, I hope. About that gizmo you've got hooked up to the DeLorean? The chronometric analyzer? Yeah, what am I supposed to look for again? A signal that it's done evaluating the time circuits. The analysis can take a while. Be sure to let me know when the light turns green, and I'll take her out for another test run. I think I'm starting to get a plan. Good. Tell me. No, no! After all, it's my history we're talking about. If I learn how you're planning on altering it, my resolve may weaken. Edna made a point of saying that teenage you look great in her grandfather's suit. I, uh, I did cut a fine figure in that suit. She hated it when I got it dirty. Maybe I could talk teenage you into losing the suit. I doubt it. I knew how much that suit meant to Edna, and at that time, my only desire was to please her. Horrible news, Doc. Emmett's gonna ask Edna to marry him tonight. But that's not how it happened. She didn't get me to propose until much later, that night at the lake. Something I said must have caused him to move up the timetable. Great, Scott! This time travel business is trickier than I imagined. Dad never told me about a Hill Valley Expo. It was Mayor Thomas's idea. He had visions of Hill Valley becoming a magnet for big investors in the technology sector. But the adventure folded after the third year when the influenza exhibit leaked into the concession stand. Oh. I suggested a little scheme to Trixie, but I don't know if she's gonna go along with it. Pursue whatever strategies you like, but please don't tell me the details. Doc said to tell him when the light on his diagnostic thingy went green. Nope, no green light yet. Hey, Artie. Hey, Mr. G-Man. How's the, uh, undercover operation? If everything goes as planned, we should be wrapping things up real soon now. Well, when it's time for me to play my part, just say the word. So you're the registration guy for the expo? And chief accountant, and paymaster. Hey, you're coming up in the world. And none of it would have happened if I hadn't responded to that subpoena. 
You haven't met Grand... I mean, Sylvia yet, have you? My contact person? Not yet. Is he or she at the expo? I don't think so, and I'm pretty sure it'll be a she. Keep your eyes open for Sylvia. What should I do when I meet her? Just let nature take its course. I like Trixie's new outfit. Cost the expo $14.89, but it was worth every penny. After all, she's the public face of the expo. Techni, muse of progress. I don't suppose you miss working for Kid Tannen. No surrey Bob. I don't know how I ever got mixed up with an abusive, gun-toting thug like that. He even stiffed me on overtime pay. Think the Hill Valley Expo will be a success? I don't see why not. Why shouldn't California have its own high technology center? Keep doing what you're doing, Grandpa. Grandpa? Uh, that's our, uh... Code name for you. Oh, ha! Funny. How's it hanging, Emmett? No, no, no time for small talk. I've got machines to tune and mind maps to sort. So when it's turned on, that helmet can really read your mind? Not really. It's actually a little more than responses to various sensory... Like those pictures? Precisely. ...ins will have positive reactions to negative figures and so on. And it really works? So far... Emmett? Yeah? You sure you don't want to take in a movie? I think you'll like it. Strange as it may sound, I've got more pressing things to think about than going out to movies. <laughs> oh. You can't marry Edna. Why not? You're too young to get married. Nonsense. Back in the old country, a man my age already have two kids and a farm. Besides, what's the use of waiting when you're in love? There's someone better out there. Trust me. I know you mean well, but look at me. I'm an awkward teenager with poor social skills and a predilection for prattling on about obscure scientific minutia. Frankly, it's a miracle that one woman has found me desirable. It could be decades before another one comes along. I just don't think Edna will make you happy in the long run. Well, she makes me happy now, and that's what counts. And as for the future, well, the future isn't written yet. You better hope it isn't. Let's just drop it. Fine. Thanks. No green light yet. Can I talk to you a minute, Miss Strickland? Surely. Excuse us a moment. It's like this. I found out about Trixie Trotter. Yes? Apparently they made her some sort of queen of the festival. Techni, the muse of progress. They didn't. Well, they said this expo would give Hill Valley a reputation. I didn't realize this is what they meant. What have you got against Trixie? It's the idea of it. Allowing our city to be represented by a woman like that. I won't stand for it. As a socially conscious citizen, I demand you discharge that muse. Trixie? What's wrong with her? Oh, she's hardly qualified for an honorific post at a public event. Look, lady, she fits the costume 
She's an American citizen, and she managed to memorize all her lines. What more qualifications do you want? Oh, these people are impossible. Why do you want to get Trixie fired? One simply can't allow women like that to attain positions of respect in society. It creates a very bad precedent for the future. Does it? But try telling it to this poor sap. She's got him completely steamrolled. That's how they operate. Is it? Still, I could get her discharged if I had the goods on her. No doubt a woman like that has left a trail of scandal, and I'd find it if I were still a reporter. But I haven't got time to do the legwork now. I'm too busy with Emmett and our... His invention. So you wouldn't hesitate to get Trixie fired from her job? If I had the goods on her. Okay, She's obviously got her employer completely bamboozled. The only way to snap him out of his spell would be to show him something really shocking. Okay, Very well, then. Finally. Hey, pal. Oh, jeez. This guy again. Funny, I was gonna say the same thing. Shouldn't you be in jail with the rest of kids, gang? I was, but then an opportunity availed itself and I... Sang like a canary. I prefer to think of it as exhibiting an admirable sense of self-preservation. Will you be playing piano for Trixie later? Nah. Why not? Cause Little Miss Goody Two Shoes thinks she's too respectable for cue ball these days. You seem kind of angry about Trixie. Angry? Listen, kid, me and Trixie go way back. I know stuff about her that even kid doesn't know. Stuff that curl your socks. Really? Oh yeah. And now to see her flouncing around the place, making like her stink don't smell, it just, well, it just cheeses me off, you know. So what's so, uh, toe-curling about Trixie's past? Yeah, like I'm gonna tell you. Oh, come on! No. Tell you what, I'll tell you something embarrassing about me first. Like what? My mom saw me in my underwear. That ain't so bad. Last year? Okay, that's pretty bad. All right, Junior, you win. That was pretty embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as this. Is that Trixie? Yep. She's not wearing much. No kidding. She did a lot of these artistic postcards a few years ago. I got a whole set of them. Can I, um, have one? I don't know. You ain't gonna do nothing bad with it, are you? Hey, I promise. I'll only use it for the greater good. Wow. Okay. Have you heard from Kid lately? We're not exactly on speaking terms these days, on account of our varying degrees of incarceration. What kind of stuff have they got you all in here? How the heck would I know? Electro this, robo that, dynamo the other. It's all Greek to me. Hey, what's with your teeth? My teeth? Yeah, they're green. I don't know what you're talking about. What kind of stuff have they got you all in here? How the heck would I know? Electro this, robo that, dynamo the other. It's all Greek to me. Seriously, man, what's going on with your teeth? It's nothing. Nothing. I, I, oh, crap. What's wrong? It's these. Dr. Frinkle's algae cakes? A crate of them fell off the truck while I was unloading it, and uh, I just can't stop eating them. How was I to know they turned my teeth green? Well, the algae part might have been a clue. Please don't rat me out the audio, okay? I really need this job. No problem, but you better let me keep the cakes. Sure thing, pal. You talk funny, mister. How about an algae cake? No thanks. I'm trying to cut down. 
Alright. We're gonna feed everyone algae cakes and get a trophy. But also look at the postcard. Trixie sure got some nice, uh, antlers. This is definitely something Edna wouldn't approve of. Aha! Finally, we got it. How about an algae cake? Yes, I am feeling a bit peckish. <laughs> Where the hell did you get that crap? The expo. How about an algae cake? One doesn't normally think of algae as a dessert item, but, uh, what the hell? Oh, it's, it's got a very, um, unique flavor. How about an algae cake? Much obliged. Hmm. Mm. That was different. How about an algae cake? Don't mind if I do. Not bad. Algae, you say? I'm going to suggest that they add that to the menu at the orphanage. How about an algae cake? Yeah, that tastes exactly like the sludge that Edna was pumping into the back of the Citizen Plus ward. Nope, no green light yet. I'm back, and I'm busy. Make yourself at home, though. Hey, Emmett, need a snack? Desperately. What is it? Some sort of algae cake. It's supposed to be nutritious. Yes! Oh, I've heard of these. <laughs> they better be really nutritious. and check out my trophies. I got this one. Ah, uh, this. Yep, and this one.
You might want to take a look at this. Why in the world would I be interested in... Oh, what have we here? Oh, sir! Mr. McFly! It appears your muse has been inspiring more than progress. Trixie? Oh, no, no, no. What are you doing with a dirty postcard? What is she doing in a dirty postcard? I swear, Mr. McFly, if that doesn't convince you that Trixie Trotter is unfit to represent Hill Valley... I don't Valley... need you to lecture me about who I can or can't hire, Miss Strickland. Trixie's darn good at what she does. I don't care if she was once the winsome wench of Winnipeg. Her past doesn't matter to... Trixie? What is it, Audie? You know I don't like to pry, but what state did you grow up in? Province, Manitoba. Why? Not even an American. See, darling, the charter specifically states that the Expo's hostess must be a U.S. citizen, so if you're really a Canadian... I'm being fired? You're firing me? I don't want to. Here, take it back. Well, I'm glad somebody's listening to reason. Let's talk. So McFly is has some Canadian in him. Trixie? I'll do it! I'll make that blue-nosed bitty eat her heart out! That's great! I got it all planned out. When Emmett shows but up... we gotta do it my way. Huh? I'm no good with improvising, and I ain't gonna memorize no lines. But I was in this play once. The Paula Maid's Predicament. I figure I could lift a scene from that. Okay. Only, I need a few props. Why am I not surprised? Some furs, a big diamond. It doesn't have to be real, understand? That makes it easier. And something from this friend of yours, Emmett. Has he got a photo album? I don't know. Uh, probably. Better bring it to me. Furs, a diamond, and Emmett's photo album. And then? Sit back and watch the fur fly. I brought Emmett's photo album like you asked. Let's see. Gee, he's not bad looking. In an egghead kind of way. Remember, I don't want you seducing him for real. I ain't a cradle robber, kiddo. How about the furs and the diamond? I'll get them to you. Voila! Say, pretty snazzy for a phony rock. Gimme. Keep that up and I may take a real shine to you. I'd rather you take a fake shine to Emmett. I'm working on it. Now bring me those furs and we'll be in business. No green light yet. Hi, Artie. Go on. Call me Grandpa. Huh? Uh, right. So, uh, Grandpa... Oh, yeah. Over and out. Now I know what I'm going to... Forgot about that cleaner. Emmett's formula. Still as good as new. Never know when I might need to get some sticky substances out of some clothes. Hi, Trix. Oh, hi, you keep smacking the puss. Well, it would be fun. Oh. So, you got everything you need for your. I'm working on it. Oops. 
It's a good thing I did this before Emmett's 12 hour time limit, or the cleanser might have dissolved the fur. Let's slip out of those furs, shall we? Maybe when Real Doc comes back, we'll take a trip to see a dinosaur. That volcano looks a lot like the one I did for my 7th grade science fair. Times may be hard in Hill Valley, but our present worries fade into insignificance when we ponder our Pleistocene past. Is the wolf knocking at your door? Be glad he's not a Tyrannosaurus, king of the ancient lizards. And if you find yourself drowning in debt, well, you could be drowning in something a whole lot stickier, like the Hill Valley Tar Pits. This peek into the distant past is brought to you by Lamont's House of Urban, reminding you, fur is forever. Hey, Trixie. Are these furs good enough? little ratty, but, uh, they'll work. So, you got everything you need for your big scene? Everything except for your friend. Emmett Brown, redheaded guy about yay high. He'll be the one with Edna Strickland. Not for long, he won't. Great. The light's green. That means Doc can take the DeLorean out again. I need to talk to you. Excuse me, my dear. Yes? About that gizmo you've got hooked up to the DeLorean? The chronometric analyzer? Yeah, the light's gone green. Wonderful. If the systems check out, I should be able to take it for another test run. I've got to run a short end, Miss Strickland. I suggest you think about what I've been saying. Oh, I will. When did you land this time? Nine hours and 37 minutes ago. Ouch. Frankly, it started to get a little difficult to avoid running into myself. Still, the time jump yielded some interesting new data on the flux field. I'll run some more tests and we'll see what we find. Doc's trip aged the formula a few hours. Not enough to turn it to acid, though. Nope, no green light yet. Hi, Grandpa. Why'd you have to go and fire Trixie? You think I wanted to? It's illegal for me to knowingly hire a Canadian for the job. And I don't want to be in trouble with the law again. Over and out. Can I talk to you a minute, Miss Strickland? Surely. Excuse us a moment. It's like this. Very well, then. Hey, the light's green. I need to talk to you. Excuse me, my dear. 
Not at all, Mr. Sagan. Take your time. Much obliged, Miss Strickland. Yes? Your chronometer's gone green again. Excellent. Let's hope this time my test run is a success. I'm sorry to desert you again. Yes, well, you've left me with plenty to think about. Any luck this time? Depends what you mean by luck. My arrival time was off again. By how much? Eight hours this time. Gave me the chance to take in three showings of Frankenstein. Good movie. A bit implausible from a scientific perspective, but I can see how my younger self would have been mesmerized. But what about the DeLorean? Oh, yes. I did get one critical piece of information. The chromium elements in my circuits became unstable during the temporal shift. I should replace them with titanium. Great! Now, unfortunately, titanium won't become commercially available till the coal process is perfected in nine years. Nine years? But there may be another solution. I'm going to fire up the chronometric analyzer again. Then, while I'm story in there, you can... Uh-oh. Where did it go? The lab. the lab! You better get down there before she makes the situation impossible. I'll tend to the DeLorean. Age to perfection. Hey, Emmett, I'm back. Ew. They're kissing. <clears throat> oh, my. You know, I thought you were coming down here to keep Emmett focused on his invention. Oh, she is. But she's generously scheduled brief canoodling breaks every 45 minutes to keep my mind fresh. Time's up, dear. Let's get back to work. Shall we? Now, Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? Mr. Sagan says he needs to talk to you back at the high school. He does? Whatever for? He says he's got a lead on the speakeasy arsonist. He does, does he? Well, I'm not sure anyone cares about that old story anymore. But I suppose I could spare a few minutes in the service of solving a crime. Will you be all right without me, sweetheart? It'll be tough, but I think I'll muddle through. Try to keep him focused. He's so easily distracted. Don't I wish. Emmett? Yeah? Thanks. Hmm. There it is. I've been looking all over for my portable anti-stick anti-stain formula. Where'd you find it? Um, out by the trash? That's strange. I haven't been out there for hours. Oh well. Are you gonna spray your jacket? It's looking a little dusty. Not until it's really dirty. This cleanser doesn't grow on trees, you know. Well, some of the ingredients grow on trees, but the rest are synthesized polycarbonate really detergent dirty? blends. I can do that. I'll wait until you're at the expo to show Edna what a suit-destroying slob you can be. Well, that's about it. It is? Yep. As soon as I get all this stuff loaded into the truck, I'll be ready for the expo. Wanna lend me a hand? Uh, how about I go tell Edna you're coming? I'll, uh, get her ready for you to pop the question. Good thinking. Go on ahead. I'll meet you there. I really hope this works. Marty! Doc! What's all the hustle and bustle? It's almost time for the opening ceremony. Holy jeez, I better work fast. I think I got it all worked out. When it all comes together, Edna will think you're the worst guy in town. I just need a couple more pieces. Well, don't go to too much trouble. What do you mean? 
Oh. You got the time circuits fixed. Not exactly. You see, I, I've been mulling things over, and... Uh, in the timeline you're from... The right timeline? Yes, yes. Uh, I've got a wife. A great wife. Clara, and kids, and a dog, and a bitchin' time train, and... And Edna? How does her story turn out? How does she end up? Oh, well, Edna ends up... Um... To be honest, she ends up kinda... sad. Sad? She lives with some cats in a dinky little apartment, and she spends most of her time yelling out her window at people, and collecting newspapers, and living in the past. I see. Perhaps we've been going about this problem the wrong way. Do we really have to completely obliterate my timeline so we can restore yours? Doc? Maybe we could have the best of both worlds. I could be with Edna, but it could be a little bit, you know, more healthy. Can you hear yourself? Do, do you know what you're saying? Let me remind you. It was her influence that led you to take over Hill Valley and turn it into this nightmare state. Come now. It wasn't as bad as all that. The crime rate was low, and the uniforms were nice. I don't believe this! All I'm saying is, let's stop and take a breath. This elaborate plan to derail my younger self's love life, is the short-term misery worth the long-term gain? Maybe we can find a third way. One where everybody wins. What do you think? Uh... No! I'm sorry, Doc. I can't go along with what you're saying. You don't belong with Edna. So you're determined to break us up, in spite of my stated wishes? Basically, yeah. Then there's nothing left to say. Wait, where, where are you going? Why should it matter to you? Aren't you planning on overriding me? Hey, Emmett, what's keeping you? No, oh, hello, Sonny. I guess I've got a mild case of stage fright. I'm about to play my big scene, you know? No telling how Edna's gonna react. You've, uh, got something on your suit. Oh, so I have. Anti-stain formula, work your magic. Emmett! Just in the nick of time. Um, step back now. We're gonna need a little space here. Oh, aren't you a vision? Like something that descended from the heavens. Yes, I'm feeling a bit elevated at the moment. There's something I've just gotta ask Wait, you. Wait, your tie's a bit crooked. I've been holding it inside for weeks now, and I've simply gotta get it off my chest. Oh. Uh-oh. My grandfather's suit! My formula! Oh. Oh, look! Turn your head! I'll be right back, and we can try this all over and again! And it's Lethrop Brown! Huh? Trixie Trotter? How do you know this woman? I don't! I mean, I listened to some of her records, and I may have taken a picture or two yes. of her, but I... Go on! Deny to the world that you know me! Perhaps it is true, but I know you! 
Oh, too well. What is going on here? You rich boys are all alike. You think material possessions can compensate for a broken heart. Well, you can take back your furs and take back this gaudy diamond, Ouch. too. Ouch. Ouch. I that don't need hurt. your expensive presents. I need you. And more importantly, little Emmett Jr. needs you. Well, Edna, I... Don't Edna me. Apparently, you are not the man I took you for. But I am, see? The mental alignment meter proves it. I am the man you fell in love with. Let me see that card. I should have known. A degenerate criminal. What? Get out of my sight! I never want to see you again! That was rough, Emmett. I'm sorry you had to go through it, but things are gonna be okay. You and me can... Emmett? That went off great, huh? Yeah. Maybe too great. to go through that scene at the expo things didn't work out the way you expected but everything's gonna turn out okay see i i know how this story turns out and the story is over <gasps> Okay, Emmett, hold still. I know your emotions are running a little wild, but don't do anything crazy. <laughs> emotions? What emotions? My emotions are dead. <laughs> they say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense, but I don't care. Stop! <laughs> What are you doing up here? Don't jump! I wasn't gonna jump! Uh, then what do you- This is where I come when I wanna think. Oh. When I wanna be alone. Oh. What are you thinking about? Can't you take a hint? I don't want you here. I don't need you. You don't know what you need. And you do? As a matter of fact, yeah. You need... To get your mind off your problems, go see a movie. I hear Frankenstein's pretty good. Frankenstein. I tell you that my very life force is drained away, and you want to talk about Hollywood monster movies. It's a very inspirational monster movie. Especially the scene where they bring the monster to life. There's this big gurney that lifts him up into the air, and, and see, there's this wild storm going on, and lightning crashing everywhere. It's amazing. And you just got to see it, Emmett. It'll change your life. Look at my helmet. Which light is flashing? Yellow. Apathy. I don't care about movies. I don't care about anything anymore. And I never will. Don't give me that. You care. You still care about inventing things. <laughs> inventing is overrated. 99% hype, 10% fraud. Name one invention that ever did anybody any good. Uh, how about... Think about Edison and the light bulb. That was a great invention. Eh, yeah, might have been. If there was anything in this miserable world worth illuminating. The automobile was a great invention, right? You love cars. Yes. If I'm lucky, I may be struck by one today. The telephone. Think how that invention has revolutionized the whole world. Yes. Now a person can be rejected long distance. Help me out here. You're getting on my nerves, Crockett. At least you would be if I still cared about anything. Your heart's broken, I know. First breakup's a bitch, but you'll fall in love again, sooner or later. There's a woman waiting in the wings, and she's worth waiting for. 
Spare me the platitudes. Now that Edna has turned my heart into a desiccated husk, I'm done with love. Forever. We're all depending on you to pull it together. Why, you're gonna put Hill Valley on the map. Oh, please. My greatest fear is that I'll end up frittering my life away in this miserable town. Uh... Me! Care about me, Doc. <laughs> you? Y yeah. You... You did this to me. I did what? I was perfectly content drudging away in my dad's law office. You show up out of nowhere, get me all excited about inventing, and disappear. Two months later, you show up again, you trick me into making a hero out of myself and getting involved with Edna Strickland. Then you appear a third time and pretend to be my friend just so you can yank the rug out from under me and send me sprawling into the dirt. Okay, I can work with that. I love you, Sonny Crockett. Or is that even your real name? Marty. My name is Marty. Oh, so everything you've told me has been a lie. More or less. Why? Why did you ruin my life? Edna was no good for you. She was leading you down the wrong path. I see. You had my best interests at heart. Yeah. Just like my father. Oh, but there's more to it, see? Your father doesn't know your true path. And you do? Yes! How is it that I could create a mental alignment meter and yet fail to realize that you are completely delusional? Oh, what does it matter? The world is absurd. No, I know exactly what I'm doing. See? I know this may sound crazy, but you gotta listen. In 1985, you're gonna invent a time machine. You're right. It sounds crazy. I'm just trying to explain where I'm coming from. I did it for fun. You ruined my life for fun? Yeah, that's how I get my kicks. You bastard. And all that time you've spent building up my dreams telling me I was gonna be a great scientist. Yeah, what a laugh. Dreams are only for people with guts enough to follow them. You're saying I don't have guts? You? <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> what do you know? A person like you? You don't know the first thing about me. I have more dreams in my little finger than you'll ever have. Hey, daydreams don't count. Daydreams? That's what they said to Edison. That's what they said to Einstein. That's what they said to... Dr. Frankenstein? Yeah, and look what they accomplished. I'm sick of people telling me what I can and can't do. First my father, then Edna, now you. Listen to me, good. From now on, I'm living my life my way. I'm taking my own advice, and I'm following my own ideas. My ideas. Do you hear me? My ideas. It's got. I've got it. Got what? The solution. My invention. I know how to make it work. Mental alignment meter? No, no. My airborne personal transport device. The rocket car? Not rockets. Not rockets at all. That was my mistake. The basic idea was sound, but the propulsion system was unworkable. But the lightning. The lightning. Suddenly, the answer is clear. It came to me all at once. Like... Like a bolt of lightning? Exactly. Static electricity. Super ionized static electricity powering the asynchronous oscillation of frictionless plates inside the. What's this stupid thing doing on my head? Damn it. Yeah, you're, you're you again. Here, I've been wasting my time with silly mind reading tricks when there's serious science to be done. <gasps> and the expo begins at 8. <gasps> let's get the hell out of here before anything else happens. What? I said, let's get out of here before anything. <gasps> is saved so i'm gonna call it an end to this episode see you guys next time